guys, I'm being extra bougie today. I got my lemon water because we're talking about fitness. What was your New Year's resolution for this year? For most people, it was number one, exercise more, number two, eat healthier, and number three, lose weight. I'm sensing a theme here. It seems like we're all trying to step into our fitness, it girl, it boy era, but most of us are way too familiar with the drill. You know the drill. We start strong, we watch a couple gym motivational videos, maybe we even buy a new pair of sneakers, we, you know, go to the gym a couple times, take a few gym selfies, buy all of the healthy groceries, but then something happens, we get derailed, and the plan's gone, scrapped, by the end of the month. So why does this happen to all of us? I think a huge part of stepping into your fitness era, and you know, note I said era, not fitness day, not fitness month, fitness era. It's a lifestyle. I think a big part of it is having the right mindset. I feel like a lot of people fail because they start working out and then they're hit like left and right with all of these obstacles they didn't know they had to face, they were not mentally prepared for, and then they just get overwhelmed and quit. So in this video, I'm going to share the eight biggest things that I wish I knew while getting started. Also, this is part of a series I'm doing called Growing Pains, so definitely subscribe if you want to see my struggles <laughs> with my mental health spiritual healing journey and also my frugal living journey but for today let's get started on things i wish i freaking knew fitness edition number one is you're you're probably gonna fail if you don't have a why what's your why if you are going to make this part of your lifestyle consistently go to the gym consistently eat well make healthier choices you gotta get a grip on your why because if you haven't noticed it's not an always easy lifestyle it's not always fun like why do i want to get up at 6 a.m and put my body through intense physical pain why would i choose a banana over the bacon cheese fries that i want so badly every day why not just eat a burger and fries every day? Why not just sleep in? What I realized is that if you don't have a strong reason as to why you're committing to this lifestyle, you're not gonna commit. You're not gonna actually be consistent. Maybe it's because you wanna look good, be confident, or you know, feel lighter or healthier. Maybe it's because you wanna train for a marathon or be more flexible or stronger. For me, it's pretty much all of those things minus the marathon. I want to look good, feel healthy. I want to be able to touch my toes without like breaking my back. I think one of the biggest whys for me is that I love structure. I love routine. I love discipline. And the gym kind of combines all of that together. It, you know, it forces me to get up early, start my day well. I track my weight and my workouts and my progress on a calendar like a nerd. My why is that I'm going to show up for myself every day. I'm going to build that confidence of knowing that I can do really hard things consistently. That brings me right to my second growing pain, which is get ready for your discipline and your mindset to be tested. Your willpower will be tried. So one of the toughest growing pains I've learned on my fitness journey is that you gotta take your, your feelings, your emotions, throw them out the window they're gone. If you want to get things done, even when you don't feel like it, you have to throw your feelings out. Humans are emotional creatures naturally, and I truly believe if you want to be disciplined with something, you kind of have to turn off that emotional switch. Turn that loud voice in your head off that's like, you know, maybe hit the snooze button, maybe don't go to the gym today, you're tired, you're not feeling well, maybe just, you know, eat that burger and fries to just to take it easy on yourself. That emotional voice needs to be muted. That's the side that's telling you to eat all of the junk food because it'll taste good. You really have to get into the mindset of my feelings about going to the gym don't matter. If I say I'm gonna do it, I'm, it's done. End of story, period. Your gym routine has to be a non-negotiable. Number three and I had to, I had to say some prayers over this one. It was patience. In today's world, we are just bombarded with Get get fit quick, get fit quick schemes. <laughs> um, you know, the 24 hour abs, the 30 day challenges, and you're just supposedly like supposed to get your dream body, your dream health, like overnight. I don't think anyone actually believes like the get shredded in 10 hours videos, but like there's always that little part of you that's like, hmm, what would happen if I clicked on it? J just to see, 
what they would say. Even though we know it's not true, we all want that. We all want that quick fix. And trust me, I understand the struggle of being really frustrated with your body and your health and wanting to see results fast. So when you truly enter a fitness era and like you're committed to this long term, that, that patience thing will really hit you like a bus. You don't know patience until you are getting up at 6 a.m., sprinting on the treadmill, nearly coughing up a damn lung. For what? <laughs> and then you go home and nothing changes. What are you doing it for? When you start a fitness journey, you're not gonna see results right away. You really gotta like be out here faithful. As humans, our brains are wired to crave that instant satisfaction, that instant gratification. Our brain doesn't work well with doing things for a future you. I think that's why a lot of people give up is because they're really frustrated with their body. They want a quick fix and then they get really disappointed when they don't get that. It's totally okay to have a dream body or big fitness goals, but don't let that just overcome you to the point where you're just disappointed every day because you're just waiting for that to happen. You gotta have the mentality of, I have a dream, but it's really far away, so I need to focus on today. I'm not going to the gym to lose 20 pounds today. What I'm going for today is to get on the treadmill and give it my all for 30 minutes. That's the goal for today. If I can do that today, I'm winning. I won the day. Number four is the last set or the last mile. This growing pain, this one hurts. It's realizing that it's the last set that counts. It's the last mile you run that really matters. It's that last fraction of work. It's where the most pushing happens is where the most growth happens. Muhammad Ali, the boss, was once asked in an interview how many sit-ups he does during a workout and he said he doesn't count the actual sit-ups, he only starts counting when it starts hurting because those are the only ones that actually matter. No pain, no gain. Real muscle growth does not happen on your first set when you're doing those baby weights that you've done a million times before. It happens when you put on those 45 pound plates that scare the shit out of you. It happens when you put the treadmill on level 11 and like say a prayer because if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Also in a similar vein, just mentally and like psychologically, the, the idea of counting when it hurts and like pushing yourself through that pain is so key in this journey. When you're running and your legs are burning, your lungs are on fire, your heart is pounding, you're drenched in sweat and you look at the clock and you finally hit that 30 minute goal you were going for and you say, you know what? I'm doing another minute. That last minute is what for me this journey is about. Like that last minute is so powerful because it's training your mind to say I can do really hard things even when I'm about to give up. I can max out and then go one more set. Number five is the importance of a plan. I technically first started my fitness journey like back in 2016, 2017 and for all of those years until like last year, I didn't have an actual plan laid out for my growth. So I didn't really grow. I remained stagnant for a lot of that time. I truly believe if you want anything, you need to be specific. You need a plan written down or clear in your head of how you're gonna get from point A to point B. What are the exact steps you're gonna take? Not just like, oh, I wanna be more fit. I wanna grow muscles. Okay, like what muscles are you trying to grow? What's your body type? What's your nutrition gonna look like? How many days are you gonna go to the gym? What workouts are you gonna incorporate to make sure that you're on track for your specific goal? Like I said, I was going to the gym for years without seeing real growth because I wasn't specific. Once I buckled down and actually made a plan and wrote down on pen and paper like how I was going to get there, that's when it started happening. That's when I saw more progress in two months than I literally saw in four to five years. The sixth growing pain I faced on my fitness journey is sacrifice. When you commit wholeheartedly to a fitness journey or anything for that matter, there's sacrifices that have to be made. If you're trying to go to the gym and get a full workout in every day before you have to start your job, maybe you're not gonna be able to go to Tequila Tuesdays or Thirsty Thursdays the night before. If you're trying to get lean and have a really low body fat percentage, you're probably not gonna be able to have ice cream every single day. For me, bruh, I changed a lot. I had to cut back on the junk food and the sugar that I love. 
I like to think of myself as a healthy person, but I don't know how healthy I actually can be if I actually love the unhealthy food. If you really love kale and, and you wouldn't even have chocolate if it was offered to you even on a cheat day, like, I don't know, that's like another level of elite healthy. <laughs> but yeah, I had to dial back a little on all of the sugary foods that I love. I had to start going to sleep at 10 p.m. like a grandma because I had to be up at like six. I had to start saying no to going out with friends sometimes if I knew that I probably wasn't going to make a Saturday morning workout hungover. Number seven is holding yourself accountable. Holding yourself accountable takes a lot of humility and being really honest with yourself. Fitness is one of those things in, in, a, in a general sense, you get what you put in. Like, yes, yeah, some people have, you know, genetics that make them lose fat easier or hold muscle easier. And some people have health issues that may limit their physical capabilities. But on average for most people, you have the power to change. You can put in the work and gain muscle. You can put in the work and lose fat. You can train yourself to run a mile. You can train yourself to eat healthy. Something I've learned on my fitness journey is that I can sit around all day and be like, you know, I don't have my dream body because my job is too hectic and I don't have the energy to work out. Or I'm overweight because my schedule is so hectic and I just don't have the time to cook or eat healthy. Or I could say, I don't have my dream body because of me. I'm holding myself back in a lot of ways. Like literally I think of that Taylor Swift song. It's me, I, I'm the problem, it's me. A lot of times we use our circumstances as reasons as to why we can't do something. But I think that kind of like handicaps yourself saying that. Because there's always, always going to be obstacles. The road to your goals in general in life will never, ever be perfectly clear. Nothing in your way. It'll just be so convenient. That doesn't happen. You can't wait for the stars to align and to feel perfect before starting, committing, going through with it. You can be a victim to your circumstance or you can decide that no matter what the circumstance is, you're gonna make it happen, end of discussion. And number eight, what I wish I knew, perfect body doesn't exist. Even if a specific body type is like perfect to you, you still have to accept where you are at every stage in the journey. You can easily fall into the trap of chasing perfect and think, okay, you know, I'll lose 10 pounds and then I'll be perfect. You know, I'll gain a booty and then I'll be perfect. But trust me, you'll get there and it's likely that there's just gonna be something else you'll wanna fix. That's just how we are as people. Last year I was a lot heavier and a lot curvier and I thought that I wanted to lose 20 pounds of fat and that was it. That's what I wanted. And I did it. And then I was sad. I was sad that I lost fat in my boobs and my butt in the process. The goalpost of perfect kept moving. And I still struggle with this all the time, but I do try hard to accept where I'm at at every stage, even if it's not ideally where I want to be. I don't try to chase perfect because perfect will keep changing. So it's a losing game. Don't chase perfect, chase progress. That reminds me of that Miley Cyrus song, The Climb. There's always gonna be another mountain and I'm always gonna wanna make it move, but what she say? It's not about what's waiting on the other side. It's about the climb. Hope you enjoyed my dramatic rendition. Thank you, thank you. That, that song came out 14 years ago and it still slaps. <laughs> and, and on that note, have a beautiful week, you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.